Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's another Monday. Congratulations to the start of a great week. We are here live for another H to H chat. Very excited. Today we're going to talk to uh, one of the best, one of the experts uh, for uh, all things analytics, but also Facebook as well. And uh, I will make a formal introduction in just a second. But before we get started, let me ask uh, Susie how she's doing over on the East Coast there. I am doing very well. Uh... It's been super cloudy. It's been like England weather out here for like the past week. So we're getting some sun today, and I'm very excited about that. How are well, things England, going on your end? <laughs> they're going great, and England weather calls always for beer. So uh, when in England, go to a pub, grab a beer, and, and you're off and running. Um, so yes. I hope that's that's the case. Congrats on your new digs there. We've got a whole new Thank background. You. I do. It actually also, for those keen observers, features... The Eleventh Doctor, Doctor Who. I know we have some British, some British people, and we've talked about Daleks before. I decided to leave them up there in the corner. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google Doctor Who because you are absolutely missing out. Well, my kids are huge on Doctor Who. It's like a big deal in our family, so um, I'll have to make mention of that to them for sure. Yeah. And um, and now for the big introduction, we've got Dennis Yu. Dennis, um, actually, we're going to pull you forward just a little bit, just because you're a little in the in the dark there. Want to go the other way? We'll go the other way. Here we uh, go. <laughs> but uh, we are really excited to have Dennis. Dennis is the CTO of Blitz Metrics. He's an internationally recognized lecturer in Facebook marketing, having been featured in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, LA Times, National Public Radio, TechCrunch, Fox News, and CBS Evening News. <sighs> he is also a regular contributor for Adweek Social Times column. Dennis has held leadership positions at Yahoo and American Airlines. He studied finance and economics, so not your typical marketer. Um, he is. He studied, um, like I said, finance uh, from both uh, the Southern Methodist U University and London School of Economics. So here I am spouting off about London, and the dude is probably used to drinking a beer in London. This <laughs> thing, the Facebook data and ad geek, you can find him eating chicken wings. You just spoke to my heart. Dude, chicken wings? Really? I love chicken wings. And playing ultimate frisbee in a city near you. Um, Dennis, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Brian. I could eat some chicken wings with you right now. I'll be in London, actually, in a week and a half. See that? Ooh. Yeah. We'll have a pint together. You've now gone from dark to blue. I think you're like the uh, <laughs> the, the, the blue man in uh, Willy Wonka. Um, yes. Let's, you let's, want a light back here? I think it works. There you go. This is better. There you go. There you right. go. Perfect. Yep, that works. <laughs> so, Dennis, tell us about yourself. In, besides, I mean, a bio says one thing, but right. but just tell us about what you actually do. What what is your what is your role on this earth um, and in your job? You know that line in Office Space where the guy says, "So, what do you actually do here?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I do. The requirements to the customers to the engineers. Oh, you don't get me no. started in Office Space. I will, get, I will start <laughs> quoting that movie left and right. Um, you, tell uh, tell us what you uh, do. Yeah, so I'm a math guy. And there's a lot of fake math people in the marketing space. And I didn't speak English until I was seven. So math to me was a way of having something definitive that I was comfortable with that you could actually prove that wasn't based on someone's subjective opinion. And I competed in math contests. I actually traveled. I was part of math counts. I was number five in the nation in actually doing that. Uh, I had a near-perfect score in the SAT. I aced the math part. I missed a couple of uh, verbal. And... You know, having a finance and eco background was a way to say, how do you quantify what something's worth? I always wondered, like, why does an airline pilot make more money than someone at Wendy's? And it's not supply and demand. You know, why does someone who is a, a garbage collector in New York City make a lot more money than a garbage collector in New York? And it's not cost of living, right? There are there are so many factors based on what people actually want to do. On, on based on negative things you have to pay. You know, that's part of the reason why lawyers make more money is because there's certain things that are distasteful that you have to pay more money for. It's like going, you know, whaling ships, this kind of thing. That always fascinated me. So uh, my mentor, uh, before he passed away, he put me in as the, the guy for digital marketing at American Airlines. He was the CEO at American Airlines. And that, that was an ultimate introduction for me to take what would have been a pure mathematical elegant academic exercise into how do you actually put that into the real world to figure out how much people are paying real time for what a ticket would be independent of whether it's on the internet or not 
And I think that level of rigor when you test is absolutely critical and it's why the the marketing people are about to be displaced by the finance people. It's why the marketing people displace the IT people. And I think us as business people need to think about what that that change is, otherwise we're gonna be hit by you know this whole buggy whip, make a better buggy whip kind of thing. And so my background is hey, can we measure it, even things that are not measurable, and try to do something about that. So that it it's about being inquisitive to figure out what can we tinker with without you know pissing people off to try to measure things and, and make them better. Right, and and the key word being not pissing people off are the key word. Key <laughs> um, so so let's talk about um let's talk about what you've done um and then we're gonna get into uh, uh, Facebook um uh, just in in terms of uh, testing simply on Facebook as businesses look at Facebook what are they now challenged by um, to uh, to using Facebook correctly. Well, a lot of people jump in thinking it's a Facebook issue when really it's a strategy or it's a setup issue. And by strategy, we mean that they don't have their goals, content, and targeting in place. If you're missing any one of those three, you have a strategic issue that can't be solved by someone who knows AdWords or Infusionsoft or Facebook or whatever. And we've done this, I kid you not, thousands of times. And it's, there's always been something strategically wrong. They didn't know what their cost per lead was. Uh, they didn't have the right content. You know, we need video content on Facebook. We need video content everywhere. Uh, they don't have. They don't know who their customer is. And this is the, the biggest of companies. They don't know who their customers are. So goals, content, and targeting. They almost always have wrong. It's not an issue of making ads, right, or a campaign or whatever. Then there's the setup, which is we call uh, we call that the plumbing, and that's Google Tag Manager that drives, remember I said measurement so key, if you don't have measurement you have no idea where you're going, you might as well drive in the dark. With measurement you, you've got your Google remarketing pixel, Google Analytics, or it could be Omniture, you have your Facebook pixel, Universal pixel, Twitter is Universal pixel now. There's all these pixels, they're tying your email, uh, your emails, your phone numbers, right, all your customer data, uh, the web pixels with your social data, with your app data, you have to tie all that together, right, and unless you start with that as your first step Everything else after that is nonsense. So we believe in sequential success in the same way you solve a math problem in a certain way, in the same way that there's a procedure. When you as a surgeon, you want to, you know, there's an accepted procedure on how you do a liver transplant, right? So if we go through this setup, which is plumbing, goals, content, targeting, everything else after that is actually child's play. And another way we look at that is we say, you can't make chicken salad out of chicken shiitake. So if you don't have the right ingredients, you're not going to, I don't care if you're a master chef, to be Brian Kramer in the flesh, and you're not going to be able to make the five-course meal, whatever you want, right? And we think it really is boiled down to building blocks, and businesses are so prone to this weight loss, get rich quick, the kind of TV infomercial stuff that people, you know, even my mom buys all that stuff on TV. I'm like, Mom, you bought another one of those AppFlex things. I mean, we've got like 10 of them now, right? And businesses... <laughs> Especially conferences, right? You and I, we speak at a ton of conferences. Susie speaks at, you know, the, the whole space where the, the topics that people want, you know, it's a question of what they want versus what they need. Sorry to get on a rant, but I have to say this. And, and, they want, and the topics that win tend to be the 10 ways on how to, what are listicle kinds of things, and they're all looking for hacks and tricks. A couple of days ago, I was in San Francisco and we taught a full day workshop with the folks from Facebook, right? We had we had three solution engineers from Facebook, and I'll show you the deck if you guys want to see it, on how do you do growth hacking on Facebook. That was the, that was the title that brought everyone into the, the workshop in San Francisco, right? A bunch of these startups and VPs of marketing, you know, some high-level people. But what we actually gave them was the basics and the fundamentals. Every time we've had a conference session or Facebook session or workshop or whatever where the title was, here are you know, the basics of whatever, people didn't want to go. Uh, but when the title is like advanced or for pros or expert, all these people want to go. And the funny thing is, do you, do you give them what they want, or do you give them, do you give them what they need, right? So that's a great question. Um, and and on Facebook, uh, you know, I've I've done my own way lower level testing than what I, I know you're um, you're doing. And 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 um, just as a company, as a as a as a or as a personal brand, but on a page. And specifically talking pages, not 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 people, uh, right. people pages, but but company pages or um, you know anything other than a personal page. Um, p posting something, anything does not get any 
I, I have not been able to get farther reach without paying something. Um, and so I'd love for you to comment on that. Um, I know we've always talked about Facebook as pay-to-play, but what, what, where are we at now? Well, it's, it's almost Google-ish, right? Because it used to be the, the SEOs used to complain that they used to get all this traffic for free, and now they have to pay for it. And we know that when you do a Google search on desktop or on mobile, about 70% of the real estate is ads. Well, on Facebook, it's not 70%, but it's a lot less than that because you have the notion of the feed. So the idea of pay-to-play is stronger than ever, but it's not the, uh, the evil, oh, they're, they're forcing us to pay now. And it's because that uh, you know we're getting squeezed in the news feed because we have to pay. Uh, that what's actually what's actually going on is there's just more content. There's just more people producing more stuff. And algorithmically, not because anyone's evil or trying to squeeze money out of you. Algorithmically, there is not as much. Your ads have to perform higher in terms of engagement. That's why the the relevance score on Facebook, which is the equivalent of the quality score on Google, is the same thing. And a relevance score is nothing more than the intersection between content and targeting, right? If those two are in alignment, then, because Facebook can tell that based on the same factors Google does. Are people staying to watch the video? Are you getting negative feedback? There's four types. Are, are people clicking through? and Do they find it interesting? Are they sharing with their friends? Right? It's an ultimate lie detector. And what Facebook's doing is they are showing you how people are reacting to your content. And if that, if that sucks, it's not Facebook's fault. You know, if you buy a microphone because you want to be a rock and roll star and you sing awfully and people boo you off the stage, are you going to blame the microphone? <laughs> right? So I'm wearing a Gold State Warriors shirt. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan because when, when they win, then, you know, I cheer about that. But the reason I cheer is different than every other fan. I cheer because the custom audiences get bigger. <laughs> Our remarketing pools get bigger. <laughs> and that helps us monetize more. So I'm like, yes, yes. That's like another people in our in a safe target audience of people who watch that half court shot from Steph Curry, 51 points, you know, whatever. And the reason we pay on that is that it's the idea of amplification. We say amplification instead of ads because we know that if you've got something that's working, you're going to want to put more into it, right? And technology is a multiplier. Facebook's a multiplier. Word of mouth is a multiplier. And we know that when we have a hot post, not everyone. I mean, some folks in B2B and other verticals will say they can't do this, but you can. Uh, we've done it in every single vertical. We found that when, when we have a, a really hot post, people are sharing, one paid impression yields 320 incremental organic impressions. So that's like going to the store, looking at your favorite drink, buy one, get 320 free. Would you do that? Right. Mm, the, the trick is it's identifying that, and when you do, it works really well. And you don't have to be a mega advertiser. You don't have to be the, you know, the number one team. A lot of people say, oh, well, easy for you to say because you've got the number one team in American sports right now. So, uh, yeah, of course you're going to make money. Right. This is what we believe fundamentally. We've done this a, a bazillion times. That's an actual math term. With a dollar a day, right? And we think if you have one dollar a day, you can do this. I don't care how crap you are. I don't care how busy you are. I don't care if you're not technical. I don't care if you've been burned by all these other consultants, or you have some misbelief that you can't do this in B2B, or whatever. If you have $1 a day, and you have the content, and you put in the effort, both content targeting, set up, you know, the, the tracking, this will work for you. So, um, okay, let's let's dive in even deeper. Um, uh, there, there's a lot of tools out there to do almost everything that you can do on a website. I've seen your posts before on that. Yeah. Um, I actually am, am in agreement with you on that, and I see... Uh, you know, this becoming a, a landing page oriented uh, universe versus a website uh, um, universe where, you know, we're getting less and less qualified on, by the home page and more and more qualified by the content. Um, what, what I'm curious about is when, um, when people are going to be savvy enough, how long is it before people are savvy enough uh, to use um, what could end up being the Facebook front end with the, with the landing page conversion back end or will it all be Facebook one day. Are we ever going to just get rid of the internet and be all Facebook? I feel like that, you know, you could resist the Borg and you could put your tinfoil hat on and all <laughs> this, but think of it this way. So in your office in San Jose, Brian, you've got all kinds of utilities that bring power and water and internet and all these kinds of things into your building. Do you feel that that's somehow intrusive or that that is somehow getting in the way of what you want to do? So you want to build your own PG&E, and you want to set up your own electric company and water and 
you know, plumbing and all that kind. Do you, do you want to set up your own infrastructure, or do you just say, you know what, that that's what we're using, or I'm using Verizon, and you know, I'm fine with that. Uh, we're in a market now where Facebook is the Google of social, you know, mm -hmm. with 70 plus percent share in the United States, and Twitter is the Bing, right, of social. And <laughs> so, if you view it as plumbing as infrastructure, as connectivity, as things that are not sexy. That's why all the kids say, oh, I'm not spending time on Facebook because my mom is there because it's not cool anymore. But that's the way to view it. And it, it's not that Facebook is the dominant social network where you're hanging out, uh, you know, like you and Ted Rubin where you want to engage with humans. Like, all that's true. But where this is going is to say, look, as a business owner, I really could care less about, or a VP of marketing, whatever. I could care less about a website. Does anyone really want to build a website? No. They want sales. They want leads. They oh, but it's rented land, and I need to have control. <laughs> and you know, I I, I want to. Things can change. And you know what? You got to be wherever the audience is. And you're even subject to you know, even if you have a website, you feel like you have this false sense of security and control. You're still subject to Google deciding whether your stuff ranks or not. And so algorithmically, you're still at the mercy of someone else, whether it's Google or Facebook. You still have to pay. Exact target, constant contact, Mailchimp, whatever. You still have to pay them right. to show your stuff. And the same thing for Facebook. You still have to pay for delivery, right? Yeah. You don't have a problem paying FedEx or however much it was at forty-two cents for a stamp. Or I don't. I have no idea. You have no problem paying for that. So you're paying Facebook for social delivery. Now, trouble is, let me let you in on a conversation that that we've had with uh, the ads team over at Facebook. What they want to do, and I kid you not, this is not some propaganda thing. I don't work for Facebook. They didn't pay me to say this. What they want to do is make it so that it's literally push button simple for businesses to be able to, you know, if you could press the easy button and all this revenue would come in. Of course, you got to put a token in the machine and then, you know, put a dollar in the machine and then, you know, like a vending machine and all the stuff comes out. Of course, you'd want to do that. And what you need to make that happen is goals, content, mm -hmm. and targeting. So, Listen to this and see if this, this causes you to see things a little bit differently. So they want to automate the entire thing. They're not trying to build a better campaign builder like Infusionsoft, right? That's the that's building a better buggy whip. No one wants to, no business owner or whoever wants to learn how to tinker better. No one wants to use tools that are better. We, we don't even want tools. Tools are, are an artificial impediment. They're friction to getting to what I want. They're a necessary evil. Nobody wants a shovel. They want a hole, right? They want the result. We need transparency for that. So think about goals, content, and targeting, which is necessary to drive the results. Goals, I need to know what the cost per is. I need to, you know, there used to be 33 different ad units on Facebook. Now there's 10 major ones where you choose the business result. I want sales. I want leads. I want check-ins. I want, I choose the business result. That's goals. They've automated that now with optimized CPM. You choose the objective. You don't even worry about bidding anymore. Content, that's the hardest part. We'll talk about that in a second. Targeting. What, what are they doing with custom audiences? The most powerful thing on Facebook is custom audiences. Most people don't even have it. They don't know what it is. They don't know you can match your customer database here and then create lookalikes and do all kinds of really cool stuff on that. Targeting, they've nearly automated. Now, part of targeting that bridges, the, the, the thing, content is what bridges goals and content. Or, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm sorry, content is what, what bridges goals and targeting. Okay. So, and, and that creates the relevancy. That's what you feed the people. You can have the, the whole framework, but if you don't have the content, you know, the all these analogies of you know water through the pipe or gasoline, like if you don't have content, and, and that's the hardest part. If you can automate that, uh, the, the, that last part of the three, then then you've got full automation. So what are they doing? Well, the first step a few years ago was dynamic product ads, which used to be called carousel ads or multi-product ads, or all these different variations where uh, you would load in lots and lots of your your content, or uh, Facebook would source it for you, that's where you'd have uh, you know mention and these other sorts of apps which will become more public, to collect your customer feedback, to create your content, so then you have your goals, content, and targeting, you have all three automated. Uh, you're going to see a lot more things related to instant articles and to lead ads and to uh, the stuff coming out with these bots as another way of handling customer service, and because customer service is really part of uh, you know, marketing and product marketing related, and marketing is the whole relationship, you know, that whole thing. You're going to see that whole economy because Facebook, in order to gather that content, they have to first connect all the users, which is what they are right now. They're the electric company. They then have to provide that level of semi-automatable services based on rules, which is you know, the, the, uh, the touch screens at McDonald's that will eliminate the $15 an hour complainers, right? 
all those things that can be automated. Now, I can't do that. That's where Facebook has to solve that problem. They have to solve the measurement problem, which means they have to track everything cross device. They have to solve uh, the attribution, be able to measure what the actual lift is back into search. Because if you do a really good good job in, in social, that'll cause more people to search for you too. How do you measure that lift? You have to do hold out on hold hold back audiences and lift tests and things that most marketers don't even know how to do, nor do they want to do, nor should they ever learn what those things are. They just have to. Facebook's got to be able to say, as simple as, you put a dollar in, you get $29 back, which is what Facebook put on their blog when we talked about the Golden State Warriors, right? That's what they have to do, uh, and, and to do that, they it's not that they want to replace or kill your website, so for fun, I think here I can, I can share my screen so you can see. Let me show you this one thing. This is part of that presentation that, can you, can you guys see this? Facebook is your website? Yes. Okay, so just for fun. I, I, I saw that graphic. It's a great graphic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and some people want to complain about it, but anything that you can do on your website, you can do with Facebook. And this is not us saying, ironically, it's not us saying you don't need your website. It's us saying that if you want, to, if you care about business results, you got to be where people are, and then you're going to do this across all of your other networks. And and all of your other networks will will help you amplify whatever result you want because if you go by business objective, excuse me, and not by uh, tweets and and likes, and reactions, and views, and stuff like that, then you can actually think like a business person, and you can do allocation down the line in the funnel, right? That's what we want to do. That's what we want people to think. It's funny that the tech guy is telling business people to think like business people. You know, one, one of the things, uh, when we ran marketing at, at Yahoo Personals, right? I was at Yahoo. I, I did the analytics there, and I, I had a whole team of people that basically did charts, and, you know, we measured things. That what was we... Uh, for Yahoo Personals, which is a dating site, you pay thirty dollars a month uh, to to sign up. People were uh, they were they were looking and they were searching, but uh, see what is the what what am I trying to say here? They they felt that that they were getting that they, somehow online they would get a different experience than the real world. You know, if you're a loser in the real world, if nobody wants to hang out with you, if let's see, how do I go back to showing just me? Let's see. I'll, so you can see. Screen share. So yeah, eliminate screen share. Okay. There you go. All right. You guys see me? Okay. Yeah. So if, if if you are a loser in the real world, if you're fat, if you don't if you don't make any money, if nobody loves you, if you're just you know whatever, why would all of a sudden online would it be any different? Why would you be a different person? Why would more people like you? Well, oh, well, the law of large numbers. Maybe if I send out you know, a million things, then this many people respond, and X percent of those, and I just work the numbers, eventually I, you know, this dream girl will want to marry me, and she's got lots of money, and she's a sugar mama, right? And that's the mentality people have. They felt that online was going to be different than the real world. And that's what we saw at Yahoo across all the different properties, and that's what we saw on Facebook. And so all these people, bottom line is they wanted to ignore the core problem, which is, dude, you're – Product sucks. You're not taking care of your customers. You're not. I mean, that it is not. No, you know. The doc, but unfortunately, us we're marketing doctors, and we have to try to solve the symptom, but not the problem. When the when the patient comes to the hospital, and they've got lung cancer, and they've got you know whatever, uh, you know, they they got in trouble for drunk driving, and you know, with a personal injury attorney, we've got in trouble. You know, they got in trouble for drunk driving. We have to try to get them out of that problem to bail them out, but we don't want to tell them, hey, dude, you need to stop going out Friday nights and getting slammed. You know. So let, let me let me ask you uh, this. Um, we've just got a couple minutes left before we get into some Q and A with everybody. So uh, there's lots of questions already coming in without me actually having to ask, um, which is great. And also congratulations because we're all trending on Twitter. That that didn't take long. Your content's uh, doing great, and so is everyone out there with sharing. But definitely keep your questions coming in on hashtag H2H Chat on Twitter. And we will make sure that the second half here that Susie gets to, to bring those questions to Dennis. Uh, Dennis, um, uh, curious if you can actually give us a specific example of how a brand or uh, a page, maybe it's the Warriors, maybe it's something else, actually proves the model of what you're talking about, actually converted in ways that you're talking about and did things that are um, uh, technically... Uh, just not known yet, and people are just not, they're just missing out on, on how to actually use Facebook the, the way that you're talking about um, as, a, as, a, as a business or a, te or a tech person or math person. Yeah, there's one guy I will not name, and he calls himself the data scientist or, or uh, you know, whatever, and 
there's there's a lot of I, I think it's really so simple. You don't need a math degree. You don't need this guy doesn't even have a college degree. You don't need any of these kinds of things. There's no hocus pocus. It's really this simple. Do you have people that are already converting on your website or through email or because you know search is working for you? Do you have some marketing channel that's already working for you? Yes. Can you digitally identify those conversions and track that path? Yes. And is that are those conversions worthwhile to you at an acceptable cost per conversion at, at, with enough conversions, enough of whatever business result that you as an owner or CFO or someone on the board cares about? Not a marketer, not uh, someone who cares about social media, but as, from a business standpoint. Do you, do you meet that criteria? If the answer is yes, then it will work because Facebook is the ultimate remarketing machine. Remarketing and amplification and content marketing and word of mouth and SEO and PR, not page rank, but public relations, all of those are the same thing. Right? This is where the board comes in. If you're generating business results, you can increase the yield on that. Now the reason why it works for the Warriors, for example, is we already can measure the path of people that are buying tickets and people that are buying merchandise. And so the idea of remarketing is if you're coming through a particular channel and then you didn't buy, then the you know the the pair of shoes or the hotel or whatever you're looking at follows you around all over the internet, right? That's remarketing, as people know, as web remarketing. Social remarketing is, so you, you know, you looked at that one thing on Amazon, you didn't buy it, now it follows you over into Facebook. And it gets smarter because it recommends other things. Because you, maybe, it's not that I'm just going to keep showing that pair of red shoes over and over again until you're like, okay, I relent, I will buy, <laughs> right? Okay, that's where the state, the state of remarketing is now, it's called sledgehammer remarketing, right? At a certain point, it was like, all right, you know. But if we're smarter about it, then we can go cross-channel. What happens if you don't open the email? Then we can show it in the social. What happens if in the app, we give you an offer, but you don't take the offer? Like with Rosetta Stone, we were selling the core product, which you know levels one through five, which is normally $500. We were selling it in the app for $199. Same product, digital download, all that kind of stuff. Because we were doing app remarketing. Right? Mm -hmm. People who've been to the app, we then remarket onto the site. People who did, who did something on the site are not remarketing the social. People who yeah. did something in email are not. So any one channel, if they did something in one channel and it's converting, if you have one channel that's working, you know, PPC is working for you, great. Then, then duplicate that to have another remarketing flow into social. And, and so when you think about all these channels as remarketing, that is the ultimate in personalization. Remarketing is nothing more than personalization based on someone's last behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I'll give you another example. So a friend of mine, he wanted to sell his, uh, he has all the rights to the Elvis stuff and uh, Elvis bedding and Elvis pillows and Elvis blankets and Elvis pictures and uh, Elvis stuff, okay? So wow. he wanted to get his stuff in the Walmart and uh, he, he won that TV show. What is that like TV show where the celebrities vote for you or you know Shark Tank or whatever, that kind of thing? And so what we did was we, we took his stuff made a good video, he, he struggled on the content, remember said goals, content targeting, goals, I want to get in Walmart, content, uh, that kind of sucked, pictures are not enough. Targeting, we want to target the buyers at Walmart who work in Bentonville, Arkansas, right? So dollar a day, hitting those people over and over again because we have job title and workplace and all the stuff in Facebook, a lot of people don't know that, that's the best thing there is in Facebook outside of custom audiences, right? And lo and behold, the stuff's in Walmart, right? And this, this works for anybody when they want to do this media inception kind of targeting. Uh, let's see, a friend of mine, well, I've got a bunch of these friends. So, you know, Brian and Jeffrey Eisenberg, right? They're, they're uh, New York Times bestsellers, all this. They're the, they're the best folks in landing page optimization, conversion, all this kind of thing. I've written tons of books. And their grandmother, no, I'm sorry, their mother, their, uh, yeah, the grandmother had a problem with Sears, right? And, and Sears, they, they were supposed to come in and do some kind of remodeling. They totally screwed it up. Uh, five or six contractors later, I think, they still had it screwed up. And this poor woman, she got cancer. All these bad things happened. Uh, they, they didn't take care of the issue. Still not fixed. And and so we took that and we dollar day amplified it to the executives at wow. work at Sears, and it works. My friend, how did it work? Yeah. What was the outcome? The the outcome is they they relented it and um, came in to to uh, offer to fix the thing properly because their previous contractor said it wasn't done properly, <laughs> and they also That's gave great. her half of the money back. Oh, I think she wow. paid forty thousand dollars, so they gave her twenty thousand dollars back. I can even show you the blog post on on that if you guys want to see it. And and that are, that's incredible. Um, you know, I I've heard even on uh, like April Fool's Day, uh, one guy that actually targeted his roommate, and only his roommate on one ad, 
and said uh, yeah. looking for a new roommate. And um, and his his right. his, uh, his roommate actually clicked on the ad and um, and and saw that it, that it was his apartment and wondered why he was being booted out <laughs> as as a as a person who uh, yeah. you know was obviously renting the room. You can get really targeted. Yeah, that's it's our uh, it Brian. It's a Brian Switch Cow. I forgot who's doing that. Uh, but look, I'll show you. This this is something. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Here it is. Can you guys see my screen now? Oh, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, it's this Sears Home Delivery Service breach of contract, right? So they wrote this letter, at, you know, this this you know, grandmas, they, they write in letters because they think that that's how you complain, but they don't realize social media is the ultimate megaphone, right? Here it is, stage four cancer. They totally screwed this thing up. He's seven, or she's 74 years old, all this, right? And all this blah, 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 and literally take this URL. I'm copying this. And then... Uh, I can here I'll, I'll go to it. I'll go over here. You can take any URL and you can promote it. I'm in the Warriors uh, one, but it doesn't matter. I can be in any one that I want because it, it, it doesn't matter where I'm promoting it from. Really, I'm just trying to. I'm using Facebook as the ultimate inception vehicle. It's a delivery vehicle. It is the ultimate postman, right? It's not Facebook because people are hanging up to uh, promote your page, send people to your website, a boost your post. Boost your post, I, that's what we do all day long, 80% of our ads are this. But I could send people directly to the site, and then here, look here, I, I can say I want to target all the fans of Brian Kramer, or actually, let's do this. You see this browse, demographics, work, employers. All right, so Susie Bryan, name a company. We'll see how many people work there we can reach on Facebook. You um, Sears, right? What did I name somebody? Let, let's say, uh, did you say Sears? Oh, you named somebody. I don't care. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, name someone. Let's let's do. Um, what's a good company? Let's do. Uh, who's a good good friend of ours? Look, here's uh, we're flying to Portland tonight, and here's SEM P PDX, right? That's the organization okay. in Portland. The you know, there's seven yeah. people that list list themselves as working there. We can target them, right? All the people that here's a bad one. All the people that work at Facebook. Wow, there's 61, 61 million people that list themselves as working. Isn't that at Facebook. meta when you actually target <laughs> the people back at Facebook? Oh, that's our favorite thing. We do that all the time, where uh, we'll present together with Facebook, and then we'll target that back to people in Facebook who do marketing and PR and this sort of thing, and then they share it. So we'll go to these things, and some of the folks from Facebook will come up saying, "All right, Dennis, stop it. We see your stuff all the time." <laughs> I remember I, I keynoted at some conference a couple months ago, and Jeff Fowler, who does digital over at the covers uh, at, at the Wall Street Journal, he came up to me later and he said, "All right, you know, I get it. You're doing the workplace targeting. It's super meta." He, here's an example of, of stacking authority for amplification. So remember, I told you a couple days ago we gave a joint presentation with Facebook. This was their presentation, merged in with some of our things, right? And here's the this is from their their solutions group, right? There's some great slides. Do you know what I'll do? Is I'll actually take these slides and I'll post them. Like one or two of them say, hey, would you guys like to see how this works? Would you like to see how to create audience matrices? Would you like to see how to do? And, and so Facebook creates these things for us. But the amplification is we take this and then we amplify it to all the people who are at the, at the conference or have, have been to the conference or have been to the page or have registered before or all this kind of stuff. So here is the, here's the conference page. It was sold out, which is great. Right, and there's some there's some high end speakers that are here, but the thing is because we have admin on the page, we can actually share uh, and and the group too. We can, we can share that content and recycle it and amplify it. Right, that, that's what makes this whole thing so amazing. A lot of people don't realize that. Right, so here's so another one. That, Go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say I think I think what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna have to. Um, have you back on if you're open to it for an actual uh, maybe webinar workshop um, because you're getting into some stuff that's so um, so fantastic totally. and the stuff that I that I use all the time uh, but not as in depth as you do and I'd love to have you back on if you're open to it as to. Um, as a as an actual workshop that we can present back to uh, to everyone I think if we walk through this that'd be great because you're you're going through into some pretty awesome stuff um, but I also want to make sure that we have some time. 
to um, uh, get some questions. We're, we're running just a, a couple minutes over on the, the question side. Uh, so I, don't, I, I hate to cut you off there, Dennis, because it's really, really awesome stuff. Let's do it. Um, but let's dive into the questions. Susie, go ahead and, and, uh, and shoot off your first one. OK, awesome. Uh, we're getting some really great questions in the Twitter stream. Congrats once again, guys, for trending. We did it earlier than we usually do, but uh, that is three and a half months straight every week. Way to go, team. Uh, please keep your questions coming in. Uh, this is a great, uh, great, great chance to uh, get some questions in for, you know, Dennis, who's an ac absolute expert. So, Dennis, we're going to go ahead and do some rapid-fire questions here. Uh, we have a lot of stuff from our community. All right, cool. Um, so uh, a question I have from our buddy Nancy Rubin. Nancy, I'm so glad to see you joining us today. She says, in a busy environment such as Facebook, is effective targeting more important than content? If you have a three-legged chair or tripod, it, is there one leg that's more important than the other? You know, it, if, would you rather cut off your left arm and your right arm? You need both, because even if you had the best content and it was to the wrong people, you're dead. If you had the right, if you had the right people but the wrong content, you're dead. You need all of them. You need goals, content, and target. So if we're talking about, say, an entrepreneur, right, or someone just starting a business, looking at doing an investment, are you saying that this is a perfect tripod? We have 33, 33, 33 percent investment. I don't think it's 33 each. I think it's a sequence, and you have to hit these things in a particular order. This is what we call the social amplification engine. Uh, later, we'll go through the checklist. We'll do a free webinar with you guys to show you how. But you need to have these things in place. Now, the thing is, if you set them up properly, you don't need to keep going back to them all the time. If your setup is done properly, you don't have to keep readjusting your plumbing for tracking. What you will do over and over again is you'll continue to produce content. right? But once you have core content at every stage in the funnel, you don't have to keep producing new stuff every day, but your gotcha. content will be the main area that you tune. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's that initial investment in creation, but the recognition that you're not going to have to keep reinventing the wheel every single time. Right. That makes sense. All right, a uh, great question here from our buddy JS. JS, so glad that you can get away from your meeting this morning to join us. He says, do you eventually see video use in Facebook Live and Messenger becoming the main draw and or uh, reason, raison d'etre, uh, to use Facebook? Video is great for engaging, and, and video is good at different parts in the funnel. But I don't think, you know, because video is hot right now, I don't think it's going to be the thing. Sometimes you just want to, you know, chat the answer and have the chat bot come back, right? Sometimes if you're a teenager, you prefer to chat instead of having to get on the phone every time. So video is heavy. Video requires that you do your hair properly. Video requires all these other things. So I, just because video is hot, I, I don't think so. You have to figure out which is the right response based on the particular situation, which means you have to map out your funnel, every stage in your funnel. And that's where people fail because the combination of the goals, content, and target combination is actually requiring that you define if then logic for every step of your funnel. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, so I have a question here from Rob. Rob, thanks so much for joining us today. Always great to see you in the Twitter feed. He says, Do you see? Uh, do you think Facebook is in danger of a coming exodus of users uh, due to content overload or boredom with the content? Do you see everyone as uh, you know they're, they're going to leave the electric company? They're going to leave the the, the the you know the the water utility. Just because something isn't cool doesn't mean that people are going to leave it. Now, certainly, it's not cool to say that you're hanging out with your mom, but you're not going to disavow your mom. And so it goes back to what we said before, where it's about if you're a business owner and you care about results, you're going to use whatever whatever works, and that could mean some things that you don't think are particularly sexy but are necessary. If you're a cook, you're going to have pots and pans. Are you going to get away from pots and pans? Probably not, right? But it's not about, the, it's not about fashion. It's not about uh, the latest, oh, look, there's a squirrel over there. It's about what drives sequential success, and, and so that whether you can delegate that out or it, and, and I think the things that are repeatable, that, you know, I, I used to have a Toyota Camry, and I don't know how many editions of, of Camrys that Toyota's gone through, but man, those things are reliable, and it, it, I don't want the first edition of any kind of car because it's likely to break. I want stuff that's been tested over and over again that drives from sales, and it's not the tool that people care about, the customers, right? The, the customers that are buying from us, 
uh, uh, the people we serve are the clients and the customers of the customers. Clients of the clients are called customers. But the people who are actually buying, they, they don't care about the, the tools or what they care about are they getting their needs met. So who cares? As long as you're getting I don't care about Facebook or or Exact Target or Infusionsoft or whatever. I don't I have I have no preference for any one or the other. All I care about is as a math guy, where can I allocate my effort to get the best result? I really could care so, less about those. So one thing I would say though, right, is is people at this point we know that there's there's a choice of social networks. You can go to different ones and people use them in different ways, right? Um, as opposed to say the electric company where right. I have to get electricity and in most places there's a monopoly. I can't even choose between which ones I, I get electricity from. And you know, studies like of course, as you, I'm sure you know, the, the most dramatic one uh, from 2014 where uh, the Princeton, uh, the Princeton um, uh, students uh, used disease modeling to say that Facebook right. was going to right. lose 80% by 2017. Obviously that's you know, very extensive. However, in general, as you know, you know Pew and other places have documented uh -huh. that there is at least you know Facebook usage is stabilizing, mm -hmm. if not somewhat declining. Facebook itself has said within the past couple of weeks that it's very concerned about this. Mm -hmm. um, the people aren't posting as much personal information. Where do you see the platform going? Uh, what do they need to do um, to retain their population so that marketers like us? can continue to really benefit. What are your thoughts? So Facebook has an archipelago strategy, which is very smart. Can you see this slide? This is Facebook's 10-year roadmap, okay? Yeah. So did you know that of the top 10 apps in the App Store, four of them are Facebook because of Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp? So Facebook is a social network. Yeah, it's probably topped out because once you have saturation, it's just like Google with search. Once you have saturation, what more are you going to do, right? So Facebook says, well, uh, just like Google said, all right, we're going to go into alphabet. We're going to do self-driving cars and robots and solve health problems and genetic uh, nanotech and all this kind of stuff. Facebook's saying the same thing. They're saying, look, for us to be able to personalize, we have to own the infrastructure. We have to figure out over here, you know, connectivity and AI to be able to actually deliver to people what they want and anticipate this. The news feed in social networks is but the very first step in being part of the board. Or you know, Minority Report or Skynet or you know, uh, 1984, like whatever your kind of view of this negative or positive utopia of robots. Some people embrace FALC, which is fully automated luxury communism. I happen to believe that's a great idea, even though I sort of don't like some of the things associated with that, right? But you see, with connectivity, they really are. You know, one of their key tenets is connecting everybody and, and actually doing it for free uh, and soon without any strings, right? Free basics has strings on it, lasers, good grief, you know, these drones that fly for 90 days. And when you mentioned like the, the Princeton study or these other things, yes, the, those things, let's say, in a, in, it's, let's say the worst, worst thing could possibly happen on Facebook where uh, something really bad happens, they have a security breach and everyone leaves. If Facebook dies and now us as business people have to drive results from something else, guess what? If you have your plumbing, and your goals, content, and targeting in place, you're going to be just fine because you're going to be wherever your customers are. And it's not that, it's, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk and I have, have argued about this a few times. It, it, it's not going to be, uh, it's, it's not about, unless you're a, mar you're a marketer to marketers and you have to somehow be cool, you need, you know, as a business person, you want to touch, you want to touch stuff that's already proven to work unless you have so many extra cycles. And your stuff is so polished and, and so perfect and everything's under complete control and automated that you have the cycles to do, to explore new things. I believe your experimentation budget should be no more than 10 or 20% of your total budget. And that's assuming you have the basics done. If you don't have the basics done and 99% of the marketers, well, basically 100% of the marketers that, that we see, big companies are small, they don't have their basics in place. So why are you worried about all this other stuff that may happen in some like weird potential eventual might happen or not scenario. Gotcha, gotcha. And and I like that. I like that, you know, it, it absolutely is true, right? This is, you know, we can take all of these different tenants that we're talking about and apply them to other to other platforms. Um, I think it's always important though, right? We gotta balance out our, our skill set. Make sure not to invest in in one bucket. Thank you. Excellent answer. Um, 
So I have a great question uh, from my buddy Tina checking in uh, over at Cisco. Thanks for joining, Tina. Always a pleasure. Uh, she says, what, um, what would be a set of current industry benchmarks for a successful Facebook paid campaign? This is such a big question for so many people, right? Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on this? So benchmarking, it's the same thing that you have for anyone else. It, you know, the answer is, unfortunately, it depends. So let me show you what, what that is. Because if you were to ask the same question to Google on what is the what is the average CPC or CTR or cost per lead or cost per sale or ROAS, that's actually irrelevant even though people ask this question, right? You have to know what your particular set of results are. And we actually did benchmark this to tell you that uh, the average cost per Per download, I think it's that three dollars and sixty-six, sixty-seven cents. The average cost per fan is a dollar seven. Hmm. Uh, oh, this is different. There's examples of this where, uh, like I'm showing you here, where it varies by industry. You can't compare a sports team with a law firm, with a software company, with the local Italian restaurant, right? They're all very different. But the best way to benchmark is you see what's actually working in your other channels. So if you're looking at your email or your SEO or PPC and you have your cost per click, and you have your cost per lead, and you have your bounce rates, and you have all these sort of uh, indicative uh, troubleshooting metrics, why wouldn't you apply the same metrics across all channels, not just on Facebook, right? Because yep. you're, you're trying to, to measure, is your goals content and targeting? And we actually have some benchmarks here. I'll just show you real quick. 1% of your a viewer should register for your webinar. You should be able to get your cost per click on Facebook to be a half because of the sharing that YouTube doesn't enable. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you should get 90% uh, of your conversions to come through mobile on Facebook because of you through an across device, right? You should have your paid at under 10% of organic unless you're in the growth stage. You should have uh, Canvas outperforming non-Canvas. Canvas is the basically landing pages within Facebook, right, that you can get fancy. You should be boosting 80% of your posts and 80% of your ads should be boosted. Uh, you should get 50% uh, view through or fi on, on your videos. You know, people who, uh, of the impressions, 50% should view and, and that should make it be viral. You should get 50% of folks who then view to make it past 10 seconds to tell whether your video is working or not, right? And uh, you should have the majority of your paid be against engagement, not against just the bottom of the funnel. You should have different flows for uh, these different uh, people at different uh, points in the funnel. Your average CTR should be north of 5%, largely because of mobile, right? You, you should be able to benchmark what a fan's worth, what an email's worth, so they wow. can measure on the margin where you're going to put stuff. Wow. You should, you should have 95 plus percent of your stuff be likes because no one's using reactions. You should model out your demand curve. You should know how many posts per day you have. Uh, some people say, well, you see all this nonsense of like, well, what's the right number of times to post per day and all that? Yep. The answer is infinity, yep. as long as you have good content. We found that it doesn't matter who the brand is. If you have good content, you can post 30 times per day if you have good content. People don't hear the if part. You should be able to measure what that lift is. We, here's, here's an example. We did a lift test spending $20,000 per day with Facebook. This was Rosetta Stone, measuring what the impact of video was. And we found that when we showed people videos, they were more likely to convert to other channels. They're more likely to open email, more likely to search, because we could measure that because of the way we did our test and control. And we saw what that difference was, right? If you're not measuring the cross-channel lift, look, if you don't even have your measurement in place, it doesn't matter uh, any of this other stuff that you're doing because if you're trying to, if you do things on Facebook or Twitter or whatever and you're trying to measure the conversions through Twitter directly, you're going to miss on probably 80 or 90% of the conversions, right? You're going to mismeasure anyway. So that, that lift testing pre-assumes that you're able to measure as people go to these other channels, which means you have to have holdbacks to measure the value of the assist. Like, look, here's a here's a ad. We spent three hundred bucks. And we got forty four thousand dollars of revenue, right? Be because it was against the custom audience. And so, I don't think I have the slide in here, but the the idea is that when you do something in one channel, when you do a really good job, ironically, at Facebook, the revenue goes to these other channels. So you have to measure mm -hmm. those users. If you're not measuring the users all the way across, like here's another example, right? We hit them, we hit them on mobile, and they buy on desktop because Ticketmaster has a lousy uh, purchase experience, right? People aren't aren't measuring this. Here's another one: sponsors, right? Uh, Oracle, 
and Kaiser Permanente and Jamba Juice and all that, we measure what the ROI is on these things, and it's not how many impressions and shares we got. We're driving, we're, we're measuring coupon downloads, people that are checking in, because we're connecting our systems together, right? So the, the measurement, the benchmarking questions on what's the average CTR, how do I know if it's working well, that actually right. pre-assumes you have your plumbing in place, and that's where right. people fail. Right. So your so your advice here, and this is just this is amazing. I think what this is doing is it's it's giving our audience, and I know it's giving me as well, and I'm the <coughs> analytics person, right? Um, you know, a sense of just all that you can do with all of you know with all of this, and what a benchmark really really looks like. So so it sounds like though you don't want to put the cart before the horse, or before you get your plumbing, right? You first want to set it all up, and then figure out exactly what you need benchmark wise. Am I so, correct? So Susie and all these other guys here, if you don't have your plumbing in place to be able to measure traffic flowing between different audiences, and by the way, Google Analytics is, is only part of the solution. If you don't have that in place, how could you possibly know whether you're succeeding or not? Right? What's right, the solution, right. Dennis? What is the what's the total package that you're talking about? So we put together a fifty page guide and I will show you right now, I only have a minute left. We have 18 of these uh, based on uh, the three roles that we have, whether you're a student or a business or a partner. And, uh, and so there's 18 of these checklists that each of them is like 50 pages plus. Let me just show you what we mean by digital plumbing. And then everyone here can go download for free. Okay. I didn't mean to even show this, but you asked it, and it, it seems <laughs> like that's the theme here. All right. So people think they know what digital plumbing is. They think it's Google Analytics. Well, yes, for your website, but uh, your website is only one part of this whole thing like we talked about, right? So if you've got everything tied together, your email, your web, your app, and your social audiences tied together, then here's what you're going to do. You're going to go through this checklist to make sure that you've got your conversion tracking and your analytics and your pixels and all of these plumbing sorts of items in place, and you're going to follow this checklist here. You see this is like 50 pages. So this is wow. Tag Manager, this is Google's Business Manager, this is uh, you know the MCC for AdWords. These are these are making sure you're firing all the same events, all the same conversions. You've got you know all the audiences tied together, and then we go step by step through every one of these on how do you set up these pixels. This thing is surprisingly difficult. How do you import your email addresses? How do you set up multiple events that you're firing for? Let's say that you're selling you're a SaaS company and you're selling uh, subscriptions. And sometimes it's ten bucks a month, and sometimes it's a hundred bucks for the whole year. You got to be able to track that and pass those values back. Let's say you're using, you know, Mailchimp or Infusionsoft. How do you pass back when an action occurs there? So then Facebook can be smart enough to, to do something or not do something, or Twitter to do something or not do something. The if the, um, logic, right? How do you do this? This is what, what we're talking about. How do you set up cross-channel remarketing? This is what. Go we're ahead, and, um, Dennis. Why don't, why don't we go ahead and, and grab that link if you don't mind? And yeah. maybe uh, just after we get off, you can share the link back on Twitter for everybody. Yeah, it's just blitzmetrics.com slash GTM. Oh, that's good. Google, okay. That's Google we'll Tag it. Manager, but it's actually the whole plumbing thing. And I think we charge 37 bucks for it, but if, if uh, we'll leave a code that's open for the next 24 hours. Uh, and the code is uh, Blitz Guide. So if you come here and get this guide and you put in Blitz Guide, then you'll get it for free. It's got to be all caps. Blitz Guide. Awesome. Okay. Oh, $1. Awesome. Sorry. I thought it was free. $1. Uh -huh. I lied to you. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm not All trying right. to sell anything here. Yeah, yeah. No, our, this is great, great information for, uh, for our audience, and they're really, really enjoying this. Um, I have a, a few other, few last questions. Um, we, uh, for, I have my buddy Mike Haberman is on, and Mike, I always love, 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 uh, your questions. He says, this reminds me, he loves H2H chat, right, but he's very honest. He says, this reminds me of walking in Greece and trying to read the signs. It's all Greek <laughs> to me. I love Mike, my buddy. He says, how does a novice get started? So you have to Give go through... your top three, top few things, and, and, you know, starting at the very beginning. Very so novice. The, the novice thing is, as a business, you're trying to drive some kind of result. And the most powerful thing is to do the dollar a day strategy, right? To think like, when you think like a journalist, that's how you create authority. So this here, where you're benchmarking by your business objectives, 
you have to start with your funnel. A lot of people want to start with all of this crazy, you know, VR, AR, the latest thing that just came out. That, that's all a bunch of nonsense if you have time. Uh, we have to because, you know, us as marketers, we have to be, you know, to produce content and test things out for everyone else. But start, you know, if you're a novice, start by modeling your funnel and figuring out what you could do for a dollar a day. In, in other words, think about goals, content, and targeting. Your goal is you want to accept your customers or accept the media or accept the most authoritative, authoritative people. Your content is something that someone has said about you, which is third party. It can't be what you said. It has to be what Brian Kramer said about you. It has to be what Facebook said. It has to be someone in your industry who's authoritative. It could be a customer who, that's authoritative. And your targeting is all of those media workplace targets, right? Mm -hmm. All the people that work at Uber, all the people that work at Sears, all the people that work at whatever, you're going to create an audience of that. You're going to have that as a saved target audience. And can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Am I sharing my screen? Oh, no, we're seeing oh, you. Uh, oh, shoot. I was just showing. Okay. I know we're short on time. But I'm going to show you this one thing. This is the, like if you don't have time and you're busy and all this, this is the one thing. Can you see this now? Right? Yeah. I'm showing the fun yeah. here. Okay. The one yeah. thing you need to do is come into here and create $1 audiences. Remember here, uh, we, can, we can create these audiences here, but here's where you're going to go. You're going to go into your, into your ads manager under tools, audiences. This is hard to find, so just replay it later if you need to. Tools audiences. Then I'm going to create an audience. There's three kinds of audiences. I'm going to create a saved audience. You see this blue button, create audience. Now saved audience. And I'm going to do this one thing. I'm going to call it my mega influencer audience, which is my influence, the influencer. And then I'm going to come in here under browse, demographics, workplace, uh, at work, and uh, employer. And I'm going to put in all the people that I would like to accept. Uh, all the people, if I could be on, on the cover of any magazine, any TV show, any radio, any industry association, I'm going to put them all in here, okay? Now, once this thing is saved, because then you hit save, then when I am here on my page, so let's say if I go to Blitzmetrics, and I've got these different posts, and I'm going to share these third-party authoritative posts, right? Like here, oh, this is today, H2H chat, then I'm going to come in here, and oops, i got to run through Business Manager. Here it is. I'm almost there. Anytime I've got something on social or on Facebook now that I think is interesting because I've got that saved audience, I'm going to come in here and hit boost post, and I'm going to select one of those saved audiences that I made. If you have four or five saved audiences, great. If you have just that one that I showed you, great. But this is the, the one thing you have to do. Okay. See this third option, people you choose through targeting? Now i got all the people yep. that work at USA Today and the Time Magazine and the Wall Street Journal and New York Times and all this kind of stuff. So I'm making sure that they're seeing this, right? Wow. And, and this is the dollar a day strategy. So here I'll do 14 days, and now it got mad at me because I got to spend at least a dollar a day. That's where the dollar a day <laughs> came from. Now I'm going to say $14 for 14 days, and I'll hit boost. That's what you're going to do all day long, over and over again. This is the dollar a day strategy. You create that save target audience, and then you just boost. You never need to go back to Ads Manager. Just do this over and over again. And later, if you're advanced, do custom audiences. Do all this crazy funnel stuff. But do you see all these people that we're targeting now? Right. Yep. I didn't have to leave the newsfeed. I can take any one of these things, right? Uh, it sometimes I get disapproved, and I can boost it to make sure the right people are seeing it. And a lot of people say boost, boost sucks. Boost is incredible. That's because they don't know what they're doing. All right. So um, obviously, we're going to have you back on a uh, webinar and do a very focused uh, session um, if you're up for it, where we're going to walk through not just this, but um, but but a very step-by-step -step tutorial. How how does that sound? Let's do it. Okay, yep. so there's a lot of strategies and a lot of things that we'll put together. You and I will work on that with uh, Susie, and we'll get that together so we can get everybody uh, going on that because obviously this is just a, an incredible uh, amount of, of, um, in, uh, of intelligent work. So thank you so much for sharing that. Susie, anything, um, anything left that you wanted to share? Well, I would just encourage you, if you get a chance, to check out the Facebook feed, because or <laughs> Facebook feed, <laughs> Twitter feed, um, because we have some uh, some additional questions coming in, just awesome stuff in here, lots of different thoughts. Uh, we already have a good number of people downloading uh, the guide. They're loving it. Uh, so you definitely have a lot of new fans in your feed right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, great. One other thing, Dennis, if you want to come back over to uh, video on you. Um, oh, the, sorry. Uh, 
Dennis, what is the code again for the promo code so everybody can have that? It's Blitz Guide, B-L-I-T-Z, G-U-I-D-E is one word, all caps. I'm downloading it right now. It's great stuff. And, um, and, and Dennis, again, we'll get you back up on, on the webinar. Thank you so much for being here today. Susie, any, uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot. Do you know who's coming up on Monday? I do. I do. It's like we've done this like 50 times at this point. <laughs> um, it's Kari, Kari Anderson, our Good. dear, dear, dear friend, is joining us uh, for H2H Chat. We could not be more thrilled. Good. And knowing Kari, she's going to throw out more uh, awesome little words of wisdom that you guys just don't want to oh, miss. Yeah. Um, so yeah. thanks again, yeah. um, Dennis. Really appreciate it. Susie, great to see you. Everyone out there, congratulations on another great H2H Chat. We'll see you this upcoming Monday. Same time, same place. See you then. Cheers.